Friends, I'm reckoning this is your seat at the table. Got a little messy hanging out over by the door there. Who you, who you, who's on the other side of the door? Show me on the other. I got the door open just about this much. So she's been running in and out of the door, but she, every time I come back in here, she comes around back in here. We are looking at Forgotten Realms official game accessory for a dunce, advanced Dungeons Dragons and the Moon Shave by Douglas Niles. Now, if you may or may not have seen the previous video I have done on the Moon Shaves. That was for second edition. This is a first edition version of that. Basically the same thing. There's a lot of similarities between this one and the other one. Uh, there's some minor de detail changes. Maybe the wording's a little different. But this would be the original for uh, first edition. And it comes with a really good map. The map is identical to the one that came with the second edition. or pretty damn close. Uh, this one I have never utilized. It's still, it still is pristine. Looks great. This one, uh, ironically, I don't remember playing the Moonshay uh, supplement if, with first edition at all. And I suspect that's why the map is in such good shape. The second edition uh, was, the, was the, the version we used the most when we were playing the campaigns in the setting. So we talk about an overview, character races, classes of the Moonshays, character levels, common conflicts, Econ economies of the moonshays, the moonshay climate, topography, wildlife in the moonshays. Then there's a section on deities and then specific locales in the, in the moonshays. One of the things that's interesting about it is it's written by a, 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 like a travel log by Elminster himself. And if you don't know who Elminster is, then you don't know Forgotten Realms. I'm just saying. Uh, so we get into the introduction, the goddess. Uh, one of the things to continue consider that the moonshays are probably outside of, of of elvish enclaves are some of the most nature friendly societies and religions in humanity anywhere to be found in, in on Toro as far as I can tell uh, it's not to say a lot but it, it, it's true so we get uh, the overview of the, of the the humans the elves the dwarves the halflings and then character classes, druids, druids, clerics, and druids tend to dominate here. Uh, and they often get into conflicts with clerics who are trying to move in on their turf. And it's a, that's the way you look at it. Character levels, common conflicts, the Norfin versus the Fair Folk. And the Fair Folk are the humans. And the Fair, bo the, the fair Bogs versus the humans, the clerics versus the druids. Inner Kingdom squabbles, magic users versus the people. Internal cult, uh, cultures versus the moon shaves, or external cultures versus the moon saves, and the moon uh, monsters versus humans. So there's a lot of possibilities for conflicts. Economic, economy, weather tables, variation within the aisles, topography, wildlife of the moon shaves, random counters. Deities of the Moon Chase, the Goddess Earth Mother is the dominant power in the in the Fair Folk's life anyway. The children, including uh, so the the goddess the, the goddess of nature's got her children, which includes the the, the Leviathan, very very old uh, Leviathan, big big bugger, and Cameron the Unicorn, literally the king of unicorns, and then the Pack, which is the, a bunch of wolves. A lot of them, and then you got versus the forces of evil, and we have Kurgoth the ultimate, and the blood warriors between 50 and 500 undead warriors that can be summoned. Uh, specific locations in the moonshade. So it's like here, it's it's written by uh, as a, a travel log by uh, uh, Elminster the Sage travels along the Sword Coast, and and then breaks into the. Specifics: The lands of moonshades are broken into specific locales in a section discussed in detail. The first part of this is a section that deals with the lands of the fair folk, including the kingdoms of Caradair, Corwell, Moray, and Snowdown. Next, are centered uh, cover the kingdoms of the Northmen, including Nornheim, Norland, Almond, Garnelm, Garhelm, and the Corin Arpa Arpa Ar Archipelago. Yeah, yeah, me and my stumbling over the words and stuff. You know what? This tells you how an old gamer I am, right? Here I am reading the gaming books and stuff for you guys, and I have my Cheetos in a bowl because I got the munchies. I had breakfast at 8 o'clock, and it's just going on 1, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Excuse my crunching. 
Oh, I'm looking to make some dinner here soon. I grilled out Saturday for uh, my sister and her and her and her wife when she came over. And I always grill out extra. So and, and when I grill, I grilled out enough for supper last night and lunch today. So we're gonna have grilled chicken, and I think we're gonna have grilled chicken and rice. Cause I do all the cooking. All right, I just do all the cooking. Lands of the fair folk, Caledar, the reign of the high king, Caledire realm of the hiking. Elminster's notes. Cromwell, Heartland for the Fair Folk, at a glance. If Curly represents the height of culture and accomplishment of the Fair Folk, Cromwell re represents the roots of those achievements. Uh, occupying the southern half of the island of Gwynmouth, Cornwell is the oldest kingdom of the Fair Folk upon the Moon Jays. Right. Elminster's notes. Oh, you just, it's a really good read. I enjoyed going back and rereading through it. It's been decades since I pulled this off the shelf and even looked at it. It's always nice to go back and touch some of our roots. When I was, let's see, what year did this come out? 1987, so I would have been 8 to 20. That would have been the year I turned 20. That was a couple of years out of high school. And uh, we were in the height of our D&D uh, stage. And my friends, we get together. Back then, we were getting together at least twice a month. Things had slowed down. While I was still in high school, we played every weekend. And once I got out of high school, one of my friends went into the service. Another one went off on his own. A couple other, you know how things go. And so I, I found a different group. And I was playing with uh, different people off and on. And I, I was working. There was one year I was working at a, at a coastal gas station. And uh, the first year I worked there, I was the night clerk, uh, cashier second year I was the manager of the store that's how the turnover was at that place anyhow I would go to work at like 10 o'clock at night and work till 6 6 a.m. and after the bars close on the weekends on the week during the week the east side of Des Moines is dead as a doorknob actually back then and I had a friend who would come up and and sit there and we'd play we'd play uh, you know a one-man game for most of the winter he came up and and was sit I bought us brought an extra folding chair with me and, and he'd sit there and we played between customers it was just the way we played uh, you get what you can get your playing in when you can it's just the way it goes right so we got snow down the forgotten isle Elminster's notes lands of the northmen so think of vikings you can't go wrong the northmen basically the, it's a whole viking culture and in conflict with the European culture that would be considered the you know the fair the f folk the f folk f folk f f o l k f folk however you want to pronounce it and always in conflict and then you have the monster complex and the occasional creature that's got a power but that's power hungry and so on and so forth Murloc the Veil and the Soul of the Goddess so verbatim pretty much this is the second edition version is a reprint of this this version they just reprinted majority of the same stuff and added a few tweaks to take into account the new rule sets for a second edition which is fine but I, I will note that there weren't a whole lot of that so a lot of the earliest first edition uh, supplements and modules did not get re reprinted for that for following uh, editions as far as I know there there may be a 3.5 version of this but I never bought it uh, there was no reason for it I mean I probably would never have bought uh, the second edition if I really paid attention uh, because it is what it is but that's I guess the charm of some of this stuff if you want to look at it so we got the moon chase by Douglas Niles circa 1987 first edition really good shape I don't know what these things would run for on the internet these days. Twenty, thirty dollars, maybe, maybe a little more. Not all of these books are worth the whole pile of stuff. And me and my Cheetos. Which hope you guys have a great weekend. It is Memorial Day as I do the videos. As you well know, I have a tendency to uh, uh, ramble on and go crazy. No, that goes without saying. Uh, I I do have some of those days where we just sit there and go, oh, what do you do? So that is kind of that day. I, I took a four day weekend, it's almost over. Yesterday I spent most of the day kind of, I don't know, sleeping and, lo and loafing around. I really, I did a couple of videos in the, in the evening and I didn't, uh, the one live video was a total bust. That was an hour, an hour and a half, almost two hours when you add all the time I was fiddling with trying to get it to work. 
and so I could have did more videos yesterday but my idea is to get I want to get enough to be ahead I like to stay ahead so I want to have enough videos that I can post every few days uh, and not sweat it so th for example uh, this week you know I've been averaging 50 plus, uh, 55 hours 60 hour weeks for the last couple of weeks last three weeks uh, this week next few weeks we should not be even close to that we, we're finally we caught up from all this stuff from before uh, unless we have unforeseen things pop up you know, I, I did I did get volunteered to go on a hood job Sunday night uh, my trucks going in Monday morning to get its yearly inspection so hopefully it won't be gone uh, only part of the day uh, there's some other you know, like I said, we got to get that moonlight replaced, the one that got broke by this, the derecho. And, and uh, then there's a couple other, the mirror on the driver passenger side's got a bracket that's broke, it needs replaced. And then they give it, the, they go through all the brakes and systems and all this stuff to make sure everything's up to snuff to get its road certification for the DOT, which we have to do every year. And it's not due until July, but we just got on it early because uh, the mechanics where we're at, they have, they're slow too good time to get this stuff done uh, and so next week is or this coming week is gonna be like a bit of a house uh, keeping week for me uh, I'm gonna take the truck to the car wash uh, once again boss won't pay the money to take it to like Blue Beacon an actual truck wash where they professional guys wash your truck now I'm gonna have to take it to a car wash that has a has a uh, a stall that's just big enough that my truck will fit in and there is one over here on the east side of town Generally speaking, I usually get a bunch of uh, Easy Off the oven cleaner. Uh, I get the generic stuff because if you spray that on the hoses and on the truck, it helps bring that grease right off. The truck just all winter long, it has not uh, has not had a decent cleaning since last fall, so this will be the first of the many this year. And uh, we also it's time to get uh, our WRA inspection uh, done as well. That's when they go and they do they make sure everything's functioning, the basics are functioning on it, and that it passes their operating standards for inside their facility uh, that also gives them the bond for the new year and they confirm that you know I'm me and I have my license except with stuff like that so I'm legal to do what we do uh, it doesn't take usually doesn't take very long and my old truck was far worse shape this one will pass I have no doubt about it it's just one of those things we're gonna do and then uh, third uh, Friday afternoon after I get back from running all my errands with my wife uh, I'm going to take the truck up to Housby and have the air. It's the year. It's the yearly change all the air filter, all the filters in the truck, and get oil changed. Well, we do oil changes. We're supposed to do them now every 250 miles or 250 hours. 250 hours sounds like a lot, but when you figure that last week I spent 60 hours working, probably 40 plus of that. Say they say 45 hours of 60 was running the truck itself now that's driving up and down the road even sitting idle we're running at PTO because we're running the pump we have to dial up the the rpms on the truck to about 1100 and so we're running that truck at an accelerated rate even when it's parked and so there's where the hours come into play and so it doesn't take long I can I can 250 in five or six weeks six seven weeks on but you know, it's busy now five or six and when boss and I says we just can't afford to do that that's six that's like four or five hundred dollars every six weeks to just do an oil change on this thing and we don't have an in-house mechanic that would and nobody we would trust to because they did a lot of damage to the old truck finding yahoos to do stuff in the uh, out of their yard kind of stuff uh, so but boss on this truck we're just going to do things the right way and so we both mutually agreed that three months is probably good it's not quite the it's a little more than 250 hours it's less than the 10,000 miles we had been going on it so you know maybe we'll fudge it a little bit and make it at 10 weeks we'll we'll keep an eye on it I check the fluids on a daily basis uh, was up mowing the shop I checked the fluids lo and behold I had put a quarter quarter gallon of antifreeze in it I've gone through a gallon of antifreeze in the last three weeks strange there's no show of any sign of leakage on the ground, so we're getting some blow by somewhere. It's, it's getting out someplace. Or we got another hose up there that's got a slight leak in it that ain't popped yet. I hope not, because that's how we, that, we went through that. That was a big part of the end of, of March, first part of, a, of April. It was just brutal. So we, we did that. So more and more in the morning, I'll drive up to Mason City. I should leave around, be on the road by 7.30, 7 a.m., 7.30, get up there about 10 a.m., uh, be done with the job by about 11, a little after 11, and then come back town, 
gonna be the same amount of time driving back get back in town about two o'clock try not to fall asleep on the way back and that's the hardest part coming back I get about an hour out of town and I'm literally just just from the long drive I listen to podcasts I listen to a lot of uh, battle tech uh, and game related uh, podcasts during these long trips including sometimes my own stuff when I can't find other uh, sometimes I want to re-listen to things that I did a long time ago for ideas uh, sometimes I listen to re- new stuff to see where I screwed up and I mean I know I screw up I, I there are days I do better jobs than others it's a it's a balance game and, and some, it's like the videos like the, I did the video on the wars of reaving and I didn't do it justice there's just so much stuff in that single source book so much happened with the home clans that you just it's hard to, to quantify it all in one thing and in even with notes it just would run on and on and on so I give a general overview and eventually ben, maybe if something twicks my you know trips my trigger we'll go back and, adri- and, and uh, deal with it so it was like when I read uh, issue number one for shrapnel which I will point out once again that is not the actual first edition or first issue of a uh, shrapnel that is CDL's first, uh, you know, catalyst version of, of. But I show you guys. I have a video here of the actual first edition of Shrapnel, and, and it came out at the very end of Fascist uh, era, if I remember right. So, just saying. Anyway, uh, out of that entire Shrapnel, a lot of short stories, a lot of good stuff. But the only thing that really left out at me was the the post, the what if about uh, Richard Cameron's uh, the first story. The dead first Star League, uh, Lord of the Far- uh, Star League, uh, as children that may have escaped Amaris's, uh, you know, butchery, and what if? So I did the video on that, obviously, you know, because it's it's a great mystery, and it's one of those things where there's always that possibility. And from a player's perspective, it's awesome, awesome material because you can create your own version of BattleTech, you know, using the rules, play your own world, your view of the world, and in that maybe you, you know, you find yourself. Uh, rooting for uh, the you know uh, the descendant of Ion or Amanda uh, uh, Cameron and trying to help them regain their seat of power. Crazier stuffs happened, right? Hmm. Little Missy climb around in the back there. Anyway, so Sunday night I got Shanghai into going on on a hood job. I don't like doing a hood jobs very often, but there's a caveat here. My boss knows we're struggling right now, and he's and he's he's. This is how my employers work. My boss's wife told me to go ahead and replace the tire in the back of my van, put it on my gas card. So I did that Friday. She said, I won't tell him. That's $120 for that tire. And I really needed a tire. Then Emma says, well, I got this job coming up. It's going to be for, ca- I'm trying to make sure it's going to be for cash. And we're just going to, we're not going to tell Janice at all. We're just leave it off the books. And you and Kevin can go do it. And you give me a little bit of money to cover the supplies, and then you, you know, then you you pay it, Kevin. And I'm like, so you're gonna get this $800 job for cash, and I gotta get, I gotta go on it because there's the only way, you know, you can't, you know, finagle somebody else to go do do this job and keep their mouth shut. So Kevin will keep his mouth shut, and I'll take $100 and give it to Emmett, which he'll just put in his pocket to go buy lunch and stuff with. He don't give a shit about. He really don't care about the supplies. And then the balance of what's left is $700. I split it with Kevin between Kevin and myself. Get some extra cash. It's a uh, cash that I will put in my emergency fund. Uh, I've been mowing. It's been a very good year for mowing this year. The, this I've mowed four times so far over here at the strip club. And this year he's paying me $120 uh, every time I mow, which has been very generous. I never asked him for any extra. Uh, I'm always leery about you know I don't want to ask people for anything because I feel like I should be able to do my I should be able to take care of myself and uh, and and we are but it's just there's no margin for error right now with the co- the interest rates through the roof my max my damn credit cards are all maxed out or damn close and that's where the problem lies between that and the never-ending bills I mean medical bills just keep coming and, and then there's other incidences uh, the tire for example I've been trying for four months to, to have a, enough money left over in my check to go buy a damn tire and it ain't happened and I'm I, and I just you know I'm like what's gonna do wife now be out somewhere and then the tires gonna go flat and then we're screwed it happened in February on the tire on the other side so I know it's gonna happen these tires uh, were new in 2014, according to the tire itself, so they're past due. So I put two new front tires on last year, and uh, 
partly out of my uh, uh, the money that we got from uh, the oh, I forget where that money came from <coughs> I want to say it was from uh, the state taxes and then uh, we, in February we had to replace the other tire no it was uh, state taxes last year I bought uh, the front two tires so they're a year old and then in February I bought had to replace the one on the left side or the right side of the back and then is, now it's the left side so boss's wife says just go get it we won't tell him bring me the receipt and then Emma's telling me well don't tell Janice we're not going to tell Janice we're going to go to this job for cash and blah 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 blah, and we're just not going to have it on the books so see this is what I meant when I ran it Randall and ran it a while back about I can't get any more raises here they wanted to give me a dollar last year a dollar this year this year that was eighty dollars a week that's three hundred and sixty dollars a month that I should be making more than I was last year but because of how my health care is set up or the only way I got health care is in part is through open marketplace but the deductible is so insane this is not worth having and the but I have to have it to qualify for long-term use of community cares which is at the county hospital which will supplement whatever your insurance doesn't cover so I haven't had no bills for anything I've had to go to the doctor for this past year. Last year my wife was going to a different health care system and it butchered us. It really, really hurt. And, I'm, and part of our credit cards being so hardly hit, hit so hard was because of those medical expenses, the stuff that Medicare doesn't cover. And <coughs> so this year I convinced her we, she had to go to the county. So now she's had a couple of procedures out there. Uh, the knee surgery she had last year was almost two grand out of pocket for us, and it put us in a real in a real bind. And we never recovered from it through the winter. We never caught back up, and just with the, everything else kept going up. It just was never stopped. And then uh, uh, so now she's got to have surgery on the left hand. They're gonna do something about taking part of a bone out here and something else on this finger because her her hands ache all the time. Part of it's arthritis, part of it's a trigger finger and something else going on. So they're going to try to fix this. Well, if we'd have gone through DMOS, it would be thousands of dollars out of pocket we don't have. But this year, Medic what Medicare doesn't cover, the community cares will cover. So that should not be a problem. We've already had a couple, she's already had a couple procedures done and that we didn't get a bill for them. So that's kind of how we're trying to play that stuff out. But it's a balancing act. So when I sit there and I say I don't have a whole lot of money, I'm not I'm not lying. You know, I I work 60 hours the week before, all right. So I was talking about 60 hour week. It was 55 this past week, 60 the week before. So my truck was $1,100 in part because my boss had, uh, boss's wife had shortchanged me the week before about five and a half hours, and an entire uh, part of a day was missing off the off this the payroll. And once we figured that out, she just says, "Well, we'll put it to the next check." So that bumped my check up to 1,150 bucks, 1,149. Out of that, we, we, we stocked up stuff at Walmart, and we don't like going to Walmart, but we paid for a, her phone card. Uh, we paid over $200 in immediate bills that we had to pay, and then we got groceries. By the time we were done, we have like $40. No, 30, 30, we had $30 left yesterday out of 1100 Well, out of the 800 uh, I, uh, I gave her, out of the rest of it went in the checking account, and most of that... I went and so there might be another forty dollars in checking. So the rest of that went to pay on the on uh, the Discover card and on uh, my City card, and and then uh, now that the end of the month is here, we'll have her her Cap One card and my Cap One card. So between the two of them, there's one hundred and eighty dollars in, in minimum. So we've got to pay a little bit more than minimum. Uh, it's just you're barely paying more than minimum. We're not making any ground. It's just it's just brutal. And anything major pops up, we're, you know, I, I don't know what the hell to do. I like I said, I literally had a panic uh, attack Saturday morning. Uh, Earl had called and asked about getting the, his his property mowed, and so I went over and started mowing. I had about three quarters of it mowed, and I stopped my I stopped my tractor, got off of it. The lawn tractor was given to us by the lady next door, and to pick up a rock and throw it in the ditch. Now. When it got back on it, it wouldn't start. It wouldn't do nothing. It wasn't clicking. It wasn't, you know, nothing. I started to freak out. I don't know what I did, what was wrong. And, and, and it was the most basic thing. I left the damn mower, mower deck engaged. So you just disengage the mower deck, and the safety goes off, and it starts. 
But I was such panicked about it because we need that extra money, something something fierce. And plus it was broke down by the corner on the other side of the strip club where there's uh, no way to see it. And it, a, a couple of guys in a truck, they just pull up in five minutes and it'd be gone, you know. And then, then I would totally be effed. So I ran back here and went across the street, got the neighbor guy, and he was very nice to come over and help me. And the first thing, he, you know, we're going to do some troubleshooting. He's, he's looking at it, he says, the first thing he says, do you, do you have it, the mower duck engaged? Well, of course they don't have it engaged. And I flipped the lever and bitch, it started right up. And I'm like, oh, uh, you know, I'm a, you know, thank you, you're a genius, and I'm a moron. Oh, my God, how could I? I'm so panicked by the fact that it wouldn't start that I didn't even take a moment to breathe and, and try to work my way through how to get it to run. So I went and put the battery charger on the, uh, my dad's old tractor, the Kubota that's over 35 years old. The starter in it, or the alternator, it's either the starter or a, a solenoid or starter or something in there is going south. Because uh, putting new, new batteries in it doesn't matter. You put a battery charger on it, you get a good solid charge, and then it might take you eight, nine times attempts before it will start. You won't even, it just won't even click. It's just nothing. You'll see the lights dim on the little dash, the lights will dim a little bit, nothing. And then the battery's got to recharge, get that charge back up. And then all of a sudden, it'll pop. So you have to have that clutch ready, jiggle the clutch just enough to get it running, and then let it run, but you can't get off the tractor. So if I had tried, I could not have done that over there. I could not have stopped the, the Kubota, got off of it to throw a brick out of the way, because I would not have got the tractor restarted. I would have had to then run about a thousand feet of extension cord over there if I had that much. and. Uh, and I've got quite a bit uh, to put the battery charger on, right? Or rig up the inverter uh, that I ha kept from the van, so I can plug it into the R, uh, my, or kept out of the RV, so I can plug it into my van, so I can take. You know, it would just be. A, it was. I was just flipping out about it, because Jesus, we need the job. We need that. We need that money. That's the money we're going to have. You know, for, uh, the only event we ever we get to do is we go to this Iowa State Fair for part of a day, and you're going to talk at least two hundred bucks. So $200 of that mowing money will get put aside specifically so we can do that. So I can take the wife to, take Brenda to, to this fair and, and she can get a new purse or a new, so I always let her get something new there, $50, $60 item, whatever, you know, and then we go and spend part of the day there until we get tired and then we go home. Uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't been to a movie in over a year. I, I kind of want to go see this uh, Furiosa, but, uh, you know, just got $28, not going to happen. And I don't want to just keep hitting the damn credit card. I, I barely get it paid, and now I've got, you know, I got, I think three or four hundred dollars paid back out of eight thousand dollars I owe the damn Discover card. I've gotten three or four hundred of it, which is pretty good for the past. But that's because of all the hours the past few weeks. When we think slow down again, that's where we get a problem. So when I was trying to get my boss's wife to understand, I said, look, there's other ways to comp for compensation. I said, for example, my insurance bill for my health care is 204. It's going to be 250. It's going to go up from 70 to 250 next month because of the changes I have to make the, because of the tax bullshit. So that's another $170 a month. I got to figure out where to come up with. They could pay that. Well, we can't legally do that because then we would have to pay everybody's. No, you don't have to do that. You could just choose to pay it. Period and call it whatever the hell you want. Your mom and pop, you can pay it out of your own damn money and say, well, we paid it for him. And just do that every month if they choose to do that. And now we're talking to her. Instead of this weird, well, we won't tell him and I won't tell her kind of stuff. And I'm like, you know, I don't like that sort of stuff because it comes unglued at some point. You know, it, it's just like, what else do you do? It's becoming harder and harder for me to not look for another job. If things get much worse, I'm going to have no choice but to go look for a, bit, a, a job that pays better with benefits. Now, this is like this, this weekend, this four-day weekend, and if I didn't turn my phone off, he would, my boss would pester me all damn weekend. Oh, this customer, that customer, this, that, and the other thing, even though he was told specifically by his wife to leave me the hell alone this weekend because I needed some damn time down, and I, and I, was, I did a lot down here. Uh, that, that I've been putting off. So, you know, Friday morning, it, it, it power was off. Storms have been coming through Iowa pretty pretty heavy and pretty fierce lately. We had one knock power out in our area, and it was off for about four hours. And uh, so the wife went to the food pantry with a neighbor lady, and while I was waiting for her to get back, 
uh, I got the old pr pruning shears out and I started with the bush up front and just made my way almost all the way down to the back of the fence line uh, trimming everything out of the way so that when you mow it you're not smacking your face it's not smacking the face and the the uh, bush at the end of the driveway had just I'd let it grow so big it I still have to go out I need to cut the top it needs to be topped off and those are one of those things that if you don't control it they get out of hand they, they, they're like that's what those hedgerows and normandies made out of and if you ask anybody that's seen those things these things are what you want to keep these things under under you know trim them every now and then so and there's actually a rose bush next to it and the, and the the big bush had overgrown it so much that the rose bush was barely hanging in there and now that i gutted it and, and and really pruned it back a lot it's the, the rose bush is now out in the sun and pop it's already popping flowers this morning my wife's all excited about it so i mean i still need to go finish edging the top and i got a couple other things out here i, I mean to take a chainsaw to uh that was on my goals for today but i don't think it's going to get done i mean i've had a busy weekend it's been very pr productive and uh uh except for the panic that, that's the thing I look back at and it's not so, it's not something I don't do things like that much it's not often that I freak out over that I get upset but not panic oh, upset a lot of factors going on there not all that healthy and, and we'll get through it you know and that's the other thing I keep hammering in my head I'll be 58 in September that's 12 years. If I, I plan to work until I'm 70 to get the maximum out for my Social Security. It's the only child, only option I have. That's 12 years. 12 years. And every couple of weeks I listen to them go, oh, I'm going to sell the business. I'm going to retire. I want to retire. I'm going to retire. I'm going to find something. If we can only find somebody to buy the business. Well, are you? You know, I don't want, what am I going to do? Come in there one of these days and find out you've sold the business and now we all have no jobs and I should have jumped ship sooner? And if I, if I run out on them now, they're they, they're not going to find somebody to drive with a CDL to drive that truck and do what I do for what they pay me. I guarantee it. That's you know, and it's not that they don't want to pay me, but blah, blah blah. We'll find other ways to pay me. You know, I'm just saying it's not illegal. It's your damn business. And it's your company. You can choose to. You know, you can't. Well, we can't give you bonuses because that goes on your payroll. Yes, you can give me bonuses in cash. That you don't have to claim or account for because you can just write it off as a personal expenditure of you and your husband but what do i know you know I, i'm i'm not trying to put them in that kind of a corner but i also get to where i gotta find some kind of relief sometimes you know we'll see how the the next month goes when i start hitting the 35 to 40 hour days I done told my wife, I says, when those real short weeks come up, they're going to find me camped out in that office up there doing a whole lot of typing on their dollar. I got stuff for them to do, but I got plenty of my own stuff to be typing too. But I got to do something to get paid. Anyway, little Missy, I'm Rick. Sorry for my lap minute rant. We're trying not to include these things. It's hard. I don't really have anybody else to rant to. And you guys could just tune it off. All right? Until next time, me and the Cheetos say I hope you have a great weekend. It just irritates me to no end.